happy Saturday. Love and having it's all good back in my life. What can I say? I have to have a biggie mug for my coffee. Otherwise I just, yeah. I mean, I see people drinking out of these tiny little mugs all the time and it's just, it's, it seems like it hurts, it must hurt their coffee's feelings to be put in such a, such a di diminutive little vessel. Yeah, gotta have a biggie mug. Um, yeah, like drinking coffee out of a teacup, Bad idea. Drinking tea out of most teacups is a bad idea. I feel like it's just, they just don't cut it. I mean, maybe once upon a time in the Victorian times, but come on, we have we have moved beyond teacups. I don't know why I'm going on this rant of, of cups. Anyways, how are you guys doing? How are you holding up in the, uh, in the distancing? I'm doing quite well and washing my hands a lot as I just touched my face. <laughs> um, but I wanted to share with you guys, uh, First Aid Beauty sent this product to me a long time ago. Occasionally they send me things. I like many of their products and have shared those with you guys in other videos. Um, especially I talk about their products a lot actually in my Ulta Shop With Me videos, which I clearly cannot do currently. But um, yeah, anyways, they sent me this product a while ago. It is their oat and help, oat and help, oat and hemp multifix salve. I love that word salve. Sounds like something that, I don't know, your grandfather would say, like, you need to put a salve on that. Um, I like that word, as opposed to balm or ointment. I mean, balm and ointment, those are useful words, but salve sounds cooler. Anyways. I've been, use, I've been keeping this actually at my desk and putting it on my hands frequently after I wash my hands. I've also been putting it on my elbows. It's pretty nice, actually. It is beeswax, shea butter, avocado oil, a ton of plant oils. It has ceramides in it. There's no, there's no fragrance in this, but it does. it is made up of a bunch of different plant oils and plant butters or seed butters which for some people that can be really irritating. I've really been enjoying this on my hands. However, it is pretty greasy. I prefer the Neutrogena Norwegian Formula Hand Cream, fragrance free. That is amazing. It seals in trans epidermal water loss after, after washing your hands, but doesn't leave a greasy residue. And then at nighttime, of course, I like to use the CeraVe Healing Ointment. But yeah, I've been keeping this at my desk. And as a matter of fact, I just lubed up my elbows. <laughs> and so they're sliding down my, down my thighs here but yeah this is pretty nice it's very expensive though it's like 34 dollars and in terms of the consistency and the outcome of using this i think you should just get a shea butter if you want more of a cruelty free au natural you're more interested in using something like shea butter just use a shea just use plain shea butter i have a video all about shea butter i think that's a better value this is like 34 dollars but I've been using it on my hands and dry to dry spots on my elbows. I've tried it on my heels as well a few times. It's pretty nice there. But uh, they recommend, they suggest also that you could put it on your eyebrows to tame them. I, I don't know about putting it on the face. See, I'm really comfortable putting CeraVe healing ointment or Vaseline on my face uh, because those things don't irritate me, but plant oils, they can cause irritation for people. So just be aware of that. But you know, you certainly could try that for really dry patches on the face. I don't know. This seems more risky than just run of the mill Vaseline. But yeah, they suggest doing that. And they also suggest trying it on the ends of your hair. Now I have not done that, but shea butter is something that you certainly can use in your hair. But again, just just buy shea butter. I don't know that this is worth worth the $34. It's a very long-winded explanation I just gave you guys as to why, but I do actually like it and have, have enjoyed using it. And the First Aid Ultra Repair, the Berry Air product is really good. It's kind of a similar consistency to this, although it's more, it's a little more clumpy, um, but it is kind of a similar consistency to this, more of a balm or salve. Uh, so yeah, I like that product and then I like their Ultra Repair Cream, the fragrance free one. Um, so comment below and if you've tried this, I don't know. I've got, I like it and I'm gonna finish using it and I'm grateful to them for sending it to me because 
um, that was very nice of them, but I I would not like tell you guys to go out and plunk down $34 for this unless you just want it. Now that we've established that. So I did a load of laundry this morning and I got ready to put them in, put the laundry in my dryer and I realized that I've been negligent with pulling off the lint, off the lint trap. Oh my goodness. I should have filmed that out of photographed it because I know things like that people enjoy saying. I wouldn't have put it in this video, but I don't know. I feel like in some internet forum somewhere, there's probably a like lint trap video thread, you know, <laughs> kind of like squeezing pimples. People enjoy saying, I don't know, some of those strange things or what's the other one? Dandruff flakes. Yeah. I am sure there's some kind of strange enjoyment out of seeing the lint come out of the dryer, but this was like <laughs> a sheet of lint. So yeah, that was disgusting. Didn't film it, was grossed out by my <laughs> negligence. And <laughs> then I took, I took a cleaning cloth and I cleaned all inside where the little filter goes because I was just totally grossed out by that. But yeah, definitely remove that lint. But I was told, namely by my mother, um, who's probably watching this now going, should you should change the dryer filter every single time. Uh, but anyways, yeah, apparently your dryer can catch on fire if you don't remove that lint. So definitely keep on top of that. If anything, I think it just at least makes the dryer run more efficiently, which you obviously want. So yeah, remove that. <laughs> Uh, but it was disgusting. It's amazing. Like I don't wear, I'm not wearing a ton of sweaters. Where does all that lint come from? Like the Costco 32 degree shirts that I can't seem to stop wearing ever. I wear these year round. Um, yeah, I get questions about these t-shirts. I have them in black, white, and then there's like a blue one that I wear sometimes. You can get them at Costco. I totally recommend them. 32 degree. They have these shirts, they're really cool. And by cool, I don't mean like, hey, you're cool. I mean like temperature cool. They also have like uh, loungewear. The quality of 32 degree, I just fawn over. It lasts forever, it's really comfortable. So yeah, uh, next time you go there, pick up, pick up some, they're really good. I'm just telling you that like it's a command, but. I'm not affiliated with Costco whatsoever. Well, actually, I'm an executive member. <laughs> that is that is the ultimate in status in my opinion. Like if I meet somebody and I'm getting to know them and they like open up their wallet for whatever reason and I happen to see a Costco executive membership, I'm like <laughs> two thumbs up. Uh, we can relate. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, that doesn't make me affiliated with them. I just pay them more so that I can get extra perks by being a member. But it is worth it now that I'm plugging Costco. It's totally worth it to be an executive member because you end up getting this rebate at the end of the month, at the end of the year, that essentially pays for the membership. The, the, the caveat being you actually have to shop there regularly to get the rebate to be substantial enough to cover the membership. But if you guys have been watching me for any number of vlogs, you know, I definitely get my rebate back. But it's also really handy to be a Costco member for renting cars and like travel arrangements, which obviously we're not doing now. You can, yeah, you can just get really good deals and things. I feel like it's a great company. I don't know what it is about Seattle based companies. They deliver in terms of customer service. And from what I've heard, a lot of Seattle-based companies really treat their employees well. And by Seattle-based companies, I'm talking about Costco and Nordstrom. I believe Nordstrom is based in Seattle, correct me if I'm wrong. And Starbucks, I wanna say, I mean, obviously Starbucks is based in Seattle, what am I saying? But I feel like Starbucks has a reputation, at least once upon a time, of treating their employees pretty well in terms of benefits and things like that. Comment below and if you work at Starbucks, I would love to know. I always, you know, I, I like hearing like the dirt on companies from employees who actually work there. So I need to finish up my laundry and then I don't know, I'm kind of in the mood to do a little baking or I don't know, something in the kitchen. I always enjoy doing that. So yeah, I have these, 
vegan jello mixes. I've shared them before, I get them on iHerb. I have a bunch of fruit. I'm kind of in the mood to make a vegan jello dessert. I know that sounds weird. But yeah, I just think that would be fun and festive to look at, so I'm in the mood to do that. So we shall see where the day takes us. All right, so I'm really excited about this recipe I'm gonna come up with. I'm gonna make dreamsicle parfaits, and this is what I'm gonna do. I have this vegan gelatin, and by gelatin, I mean, I think it's got agar in it, orange flavor. I'm gonna make that and I'm gonna mix in some mandarin, mandarins, mandarin oranges or clementines. I don't know what species those are. So I'm gonna make that and I'm gonna put that as a bottom layer and then I'm gonna make this vegan instant vanilla pudding uh, with some soy milk um, and I'm gonna put that on the top. Won't that be cool as a creamsicle? I love creamsicle. It's odd, like, when I was growing up, we had this little, I was always told you should never drink milk and orange juice together, like, at the same time or within the same meal, that it would upset your stomach. And I don't know if that's an urban legend or what, but anyways, uh, so the idea of a creamsicle was always like kind of wild, that you could have, you could have dairy and and citrus in a mambo combo, and it was so decadent. I always enjoyed orange Julius, and the key ingredient in that is a little vanilla extract. So I'm thinking that maybe the vanilla flavor in this vanilla pudding will come through. Yeah, I get these on iHerb, Simply Delish. They're actually sugar-free as well, so they're kind of a good, they're a good find. Yeah, you know those like Betty Crocker style old school desserts that, they were never like, gourmet or anything but there's some element of nostalgia to them that's kind of what i'm going for here when i was growing up i always enjoyed going to what's called like a cafeteria style restaurant they have them in the south and you go through this line and they have like various veggie dishes and then they have like various meats and you pick like a meat and several vegetables and then they typically have amazing desserts like really decadent desserts. And they always have these elaborate jello parfaits. So that's kind of what I'm going for here. A jello parfait. pudding that too has to set up for about five minutes but I figure once the jello is solidified then I'll put the pudding on top but anyways let's just chill <laughs> stay home that's a little local humor if you missed that anyways I thought for fun I would share with you guys how I've been doing my hair lately I know you guys are like wait a minute this is the last place we're gonna go for hair styling tips but I've really been enjoying what I've been doing lately simply because it's really good if you have long hair and you suffer from thinning around the temples. That's called traction alopecia. It's really common for people who wear their hair pulled back tight to start getting thinning right around the temples, simply related to the traction on the hair. And that takes a long time to recover from. The only way to get that better is to stop wearing your hair pulled back tight and to wear loose hairstyles. And with time, if you keep if you keep wearing tight hairstyles, you keep that traction on the hair shaft 
not only will it thin the hair there, but also the little hair follicles down in your scalp will start to get so angry they'll scar down. You get permanent hair loss in those areas, and after that point, you will not get hair regrowth in those areas. So you wanna avoid that. Um, so, <laughs> long-winded story for telling you guys about this loose hairstyle. You guys know, I like, I've always liked wearing my hair in a bun, but that is traction central right there. So I've been doing this kind of pseudo, I call it the no care Gibson girl look. I don't know. <laughs> um, basically, you guys know I love these little claw clampies. These are like the perfect size. Um, so it just involves those and that is it. No, no other accessories or anything. We're about to get Don King up in here. As a matter of fact, there's like some humidity going on. So actually it's not, it's not that bad. And Side note, because I always wear my hair in some sort of a coiled, loose coiled updo, when I take it down, it gives it a, like a natural curl and kind of volume to it, which if you, if you have some skill set, you could style and you, know, you might be happy with that, but you, you know me, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Woo! I'm going to spell off my bath mat there. Anyways, I basically just do... In my hand, I do a loose, high ponytail. And by loose, I just mean like, as I'm pulling it back, I make sure I'm not pulling my hair tight, but it's to a height that I like. And then, this is good if you have long hair. <clears throat> I mean, medium length hair, this will work as well. As a side note, I haven't cut my hair in like two years. We go into quarantine, all the hair salons have to close up shop. What do I want? A trim! <laughs> You always want what you can't have, but you can trust. I'm not going to do my own my own hair trim. Let's not let's not go down that that dark path. I will wait until the salon's open to get my hair trimmed, and at that point, it's going to be packed with customers. So, and by trim, I just mean a few inches off. I don't mean like a full-on haircut. I think I I like keeping my hair long. Anyways. So what I do is, this is kind of where it gets to Gibson Girl because it starts to bunch, starts to loosen up up here, which is what you want to re remove that traction. So you just twist the hair and then cinnamon bun it down with your hand so it's flat and coiled on the top of your head. All right, and then you take one of these claws and you loosely, don't, don't try and get it too tight. If you try and get it too tight, it defeats the purpose of the loose hairstyle. And you crawl it up the back of your hair, so you pick up some little wispies along the way, but, but not so much that you're like cementing the wispies to the back of your scalp, that'll give you a headache. And then you just loosely clamp it around the roll. And same thing here. And they're in the back, so it kind of makes the bun flop over a little bit, and then this remains loose here. See how there's no, there's no tension here? And it just kind of stays like that. Then, if you want to jazz it up, what you can do, I don't have one in here, but let me go grab one very quick. All right, say you want to liven it up a little bit, you can take a headband, like one of these that's just gonna sit on your head, it's not gonna be too tight or uncomfortable. You kind of have to pick your own headband for the shape of your head. Like these are the ones from Headbands of Hope that I get, but everybody's head is shaped differently, and so some headbands give people a headache, but these are really comfortable. Anyways, and they have a ton of these kind of things on Amazon too. Um, if you wanna jazz it up a little bit, you just put that, it's like, instant updo. I don't know. I've really been enjoying this because it's simple. It doesn't it, it doesn't give you a headache and it doesn't put traction on on your scalp. It doesn't make your scalp hurt. Um, and it's up off my face. I don't like having my hair touch my face. You guys always are like, why don't you wear your hair down more? And it's because my face is often still sticky from sunscreen. And if I wear my hair down, then it's like fly paper. So I don't I don't like wearing my hair down. Plus, like, I don't know, it just aggravates me having stuff touch my face all the time. And then with cooking and things, like, 
leaning over and my hair sweeping across things. I can't do it. But yeah, that's my little hair tutorial. All right, so the uh, Jello has definitely set up and so has the pudding. <laughs> Harkening uh, those old commercials. Anyways, yeah, the pudding set up. So has the Jello. So I'm just gonna top the uh, gelatin. I need to stop calling it gelatin. What do you call this? Just gel, J-E-L? All right, gel. I'm gonna top the gel with <laughs> with the pudding and then I'm gonna add some more orange slices. Isn't this gonna be fun, you guys? It says good morning even though it's three o'clock. Oh well. Eh, I'm so happy with how these came out. Aren't they cute? <laughs> Little dreamsicle parfaits. Let's see how they taste. So I've never made these pudding mixes with soy milk before. I've only made them with almond milk. Soy milk can kind of have that aftertaste. Soy milk is definitely an acquired taste. Like that scene in Santa Claus when Tim Allen drinks his soy milk and he's like, it's definitely what it's like the first time you have it. But I have developed a taste for it, I love it. However, when you're baking with it and using it in recipes, it can bunk up the flavor of things. So I'm not so sure how this will go, but I wanted to do it with soy milk so it would have a little bit of protein in it and I am out of almond milk. I've been making my own almond milk and I also make my own soy milk with my soy bella, but I am I am out of I'm out of almonds and I'm out of soybeans right now. So yeah, I have this box soy milk, which is pretty good. Give this a try -sy. You gotta get both the gelatin and the pudding. Gel, gosh, it's gonna be hard for me not to say that. I think it would be better with almond milk, but, because the soy milk it tastes good. The pudding part tastes good by itself, but the soy milk is masking some of the vanilla taste of the pudding mix. Whereas I think almond milk, because it has more of a water component and less is less protein rich, I think it would allow for the vanilla to shine through. Plus maybe a few drops of vanilla extract would have really made it come through, but it's good. Sometimes I wonder where my brain is. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to try doing a strawberry one next. So I have some strawberry gel, gel and then a strawberry, the strawberry pudding mix. I think that'll be really good with some fresh strawberries. And I also have lemon, lemon blueberry it would be divine. I think I would use, maybe I would use the vanilla and then I have some of the sweet leaf stevia drops in the lemon flavor that I could add, I think that would be really good. And then with blueberry, mm, that would be delightful. Yeah, this could be fun. Parfait, Andre. Yeah, I get these on, on the herb. Simply delish. I'll list them down below. Well, hey guys, I am gonna go to sleep. You know something, I have become this person who is very dependent on fans. Not only my ceiling fan, but now I've got Vornado judging. I have not turned that thing off since I got it. And as a matter of fact, a few months ago, my the power went out for like 20 minutes in the middle of the night. The longest 20 minutes. I woke up immediately and I couldn't go back to sleep until that 20 minutes was over and the power came back on and my fan was restored. But now I've got a Vornado as well and I feel as though I have become reliant on it too so that when it goes out I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be alone and afraid <laughs> in still air. What is my life? I have become that person. Next thing you know I'll have to be in a wind tunnel in order to go to sleep. 
<sighs> yeah. Yeah, I think my sleep hygiene routine has just gotten a little out of control. I, not only do I have this fan thing on, I'm getting more and more into, let's see how much more, how, how dark, how, how much darker can I make the room at night? I already have blackout curtains. I have no light in here when I turn the light out at night. I close my door, and now I have the sleep mask. I'm so, such a light sleeper that I, sometimes if I roll over, I can see or sense the faint glow, I'm not even kidding, of the microwave time light. I can sense that all the way in the kitchen. You guys know where my kitchen is in relation to the room. Like, what is my brain? It just wants to be awake all the time. So yeah, I've got this now. Next thing you know, I'm going to have an anvil on my face. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you all enjoyed today's vlogadundo. I certainly did. We're having fun together on these weekends. It's kind of like, I don't know, sleepover camp or something when we hang out together. So, thank you all for coming along. I hope you guys are doing well and enjoying your weekend in solitude, distancing from people. And uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.